we'll start by talking about the basics of inertia. So what it is, how it's calculated, and the relationship between inertia and system frequency. At its core, inertia is energy. And more specifically, it is the kinetic energy that's stored in the rotating masses of generators and motors that synchronously connected to the power system. And so this kinetic energy is actually exchanged with the power system. It's either released or absorbed whenever there is an instantaneous mismatch between generation and load. And this is what we call a inertial response. Non-synchronous devices that are connected to the system via like power electronic inverters, such as solar PV or type 4 wind turbines, they have zero inertia, there's no inertial coupling there. And it's been shown also that fixed speed induction generator wind turbines are actually inertially coupled and do provide an inertial response as per this uh, reference one here. So this is a derivation of the inertia of rotating cylindrical masses. And that could be something like a generator shaft. I wanted to start here because I wanted to show how inertia is traditionally anyway, derived from the physical and the mechanical aspects of, um, of generators. So we start here with the length of a circle, which is a, an arc of a circle rather, and it's related to the angle theta and the radius of that circle. And if this circle was rotating, then we would have some velocity, theta r divided by time t. And we could convert that into some kind of angular velocity. So the velocity is equal to omega times the radius. So if we put all that together, then we actually have um, kinetic energy in its general form, half mv squared, in joules. And if we whack in the v, the velocity, we would get the rotational kinetic energy, or the inertia, which is half mv omega r squared. Alternatively, we can describe that as half j omega squared, where j is m r squared, and that is called the moment of inertia in kilograms per meter squared. And you know, for synchronous power systems, we, we operate at uh, a nominal frequency, fn, and so we have this omega m, which is equal to 2 pi fn. So the moment of inertia for a generator is probably something that's familiar to you guys already. And it's something that you would find on a generator data sheet. And from the equation, j equals m r squared. For generator shafts, it, the moment of inertia is proportional to its mass and the square of its radius. So the heavier and the bigger a generator shaft, then the higher the inertia. And you can see here, uh, typically with steam turbines and industrial gas turbines, you may have some of the higher type inertia con constants where sort of the aeroderivative gas turbines, which are, as the name suggests, derived from aeroplanes, they, they're much lighter and have lower inertia. And hydro turbines, depending on its type, can have quite high inertia as well. And here we see the, the shaft basically from, an, from a combustion engine, from like a diesel engine. And you can see that it's not much mass or radius here. And you don't expect there to be very high inertia from uh, combustion engines. We previously described the inertia of a generator as kinetic energy, and so in terms of joules or megawatt seconds. But we can also normalize this inertia by getting the kinetic energy and dividing by its nominal apparent power of that generating unit. And this is known as the inertia constant, H. Inertia constant is useful to give an insight on how different generation technologies um, provide different levels of inertia. So here we have a plot of typical inertia constants for different generating technologies. And we spoke before that diesel engines and combustion engines have quite low inertia. You can see here that you know, the, the range of inertia values is, is between sort of 0.8 and 1.8. And uh, on the other hand, you might have gas turbines and steam turbines that have quite high inertia constants. So far, we've talked about inertia purely from a single generating unit perspective. But probably what's more interesting for us is, what is the total 
inertia in the power system. And this can be calculated as the aggregate sum of all the different inertial components that's currently connected to the system. And in general, theoretically, this is the sum of all synchronous generators in the system as well as all the synchronous loads in the system. So inertial components can come from synchronous generators, synchronous motor loads, as well as synchronous condensers. Now calculating the system inertia by this method of summing up all the individual components is generally not all that practical in anything but very small systems where the connection status and the inertial parameters for all the components are known. And we'll get this a bit later on in the estimation of inertia, but suffice to say that it is difficult in large systems particularly to estimate what the load inertia in the system is. As mentioned at the start of this section, inertia is basically the energy that is exchanged with the power system whenever there's an instantaneous mismatch between generation and load. And a nice analogy for describing the relationship between inertia and system frequency is the water in the tank analogy. And in this water in the tank analogy, you have a tank full of water, and the water itself is the inertia. You have generation as a hose of water going into the tank and you have a spigot where water comes out of the tank and load comes out. And the water level is the frequency. So in the first case when you have more load than generation, basically you have load coming out of, more water coming out of the tank than generation coming in and you have an energy deficit and inertia is supplying that energy for that load. And, but as a result, your water level declines, and so your frequency also declines. When in the opposite scenario, you have generation that is greater than load, so you have more gen water filling the tank, and so therefore the water level rises. And when you have the exact matching between generation and load, then there should be no inertial exchange, and basically your frequency should stay perfectly stable. So what happens if generation is suddenly withdrawn from the system? So you have a situation now where you have water and it stops and the inertia is supplying all the load and therefore your frequency is declined. But what if the tank was smaller and we had lower inertia? Then the inertia is still supplying the load but the tank is smaller so it drains more quickly. And so you have a faster decline in frequency. So what's called a higher rate of change of frequency, rock off. The intuition behind the water and tech analogy describing the relation between inertia and system frequency can be more formally described mathematically as a first order differential equation known as the swing equation, which says that the rock off is some function of system inertia and the imbalance between generation and load. So you can see here that if your inertia goes up, then your rock off should go down, which is as per our intuitions. Now, load damping effects can also be included explicitly in the swing equation. And this is something that you'll see uh, as a pretty common formulation of the, the swing equation. We'll talk about load damping and load relief effects a bit later on. 